guy out of nowhere. He was like, Bob Marley daughter, Beyonce daughter, come with me. Period. Can you twerk? Can you twerk? I'm like, no. Conquering discrimination for <laughs> Period. What's up, you guys? I am dedicated again. And today I have a very special guest. Hi, everybody. My name is Taylor. My YouTube channel is Wandering K. Instagram is Wandering K. And I'm excited to talk about our topic today. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, so, you guys are always like, Kara, what is it like being black in Korea? Do you face racism? What happens? I want to know. And today, we are going to go through all of your questions and concerns and wonderings here. So the first thing we have is, what is it like being black in Korea? Taylor, do you want to start? That question is always hard for me to answer. Mm -hmm. But one thing that I would like to say is I think the sense of community is better between black people in Korea, just in my experience. Everyone is just like, where's the black people? I need the black people. And then we just come together. Maybe in general, the expat community is really close, but I think the black community here is really tight as well. Yeah, I definitely agree. I feel like I'm more in tune with the community here mm -hmm. than I probably would be if I were back home. More so because like I have my family back home, right? right? But here I don't have my family. So I'm always looking for like people who get the experience to understand it because we all don't navigate Korea the same way. And I say that as in like, not everybody is going to have the same experiences as a black person in Korea. Right. So it's difficult to kind of like make friends or even trying to be on the same level. level? I wouldn't say level, but like just having somebody understand the struggle. <laughs> I get what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> Especially like with stereotypes and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think are some stereotypes that Korea might have of black people? One that I seem to get a lot, like if I go out like clubbing or whatever, mm -hmm. is that like I love to twerk and like dab people. And both of those things work the hell out of me. <laughs> like some random guy will come up to me and dap me up like really hard. And I'm like, Monday? <laughs> it's always one day. Always one day. And I'm like, I'm a lady. <laughs> like, why are you doing that to me? Or like, can you twerk? Can you twerk? And I'm like, no. I, I, I don't know. I'm, I can't dance, first of all. So that's one thing. And it's like, well, no. Ooh, why? Who goes up to people and just asks them something like that? Like, it's really weird. So I think that would be a stereotype. Yeah, I agree. Completely agree. That reminds me of a time when I was in Hongdae and my friend and I were almost like kidnapped on the street. Oh. And I say that lightly. Can we get a story time? <laughs> <laughs> story time. So we were out in the streets. It was like 2 a.m., 1 a.m. in the morning. And we had just left people watching. So what we mean by that is that we like to watch the drunk people and like make fun of them. <laughs> um, we were heading back and this guy out of nowhere, he was like, Bob Marley daughter, Beyonce daughter, come with me. And we were like, no. And then he had his other friend, he was like, no, no, Beyonce daughter. And he grabbed us by our arms and he was dragging us. He's like, Beyonce daughter, Bob Marley daughter. And my, my friend, she had in like box braids. Oh. So she was Bob oh, Marley's daughter. <laughs> and I guess I was Beyonce's daughter. It was like, Beyonce? <laughs> I'm so sorry to you, Beyonce. But yeah, he was grabbing us. And then thankfully, um, this really tall guy, he was probably in the army, um, but it was a black guy. And he looked at them, he was like, you guys need to stop. And then after like he intervened, they kind of ran away. Yeah. Um, and then he like left. <laughs> and we were so thankful for him. I feel like if he weren't there, we were we definitely would have gotten yeah. <laughs> in the streets of Hongdae. It's interesting to see how stereotypes play out, especially like with over sexualization of yeah. black women. And 
how they're like, yeah, you know, of course she's gonna want to come to us. It's like, yeah. no, Black leave me alone. <laughs> Please. I think those are the biggest ones though. Mm-hmm. It's just people thinking that I'll be okay with anything. It's, it's mostly like when I go out in the clubs and stuff and guys just being like really disgusting. And just like you, like it'll be some random guy that I've never met before just come and step in and kind of like save the day because you can say no mm-hmm. and like homeboy boys are undefeated in disrespect <laughs> so they don't care ever and I'm just like <sighs> I'm not a fighter so <laughs> please don't do this <laughs> like, <laughs> like we're just not a trying peaceful to moment <laughs> I agree and it's like we're, we're trying to keep the peace yeah because we don't want to get to <laughs> yeah if I slap you. I'm in trouble. So. Yeah, it's definitely something to be careful about. And it sucks because of the way American media kinds of plays on those stereotypes and like all they see is what American media they consume. But then again, they should know better. I 100%. Have you ever faced racism in Korea? I'd like to say yes, but mine is not as bad as like friends of mine. Mm -hmm. I think one particular experience is like a group of my friends went into a club before me Mm -hmm. and another friend did. And when we went, they were like, oh, it's school. Like no one else would come in. And then Koreans came out and then they let the Koreans behind us in. So I was like, this could have been many situations. Like maybe they had a foreigner cap. It also could have been a black thing. Mm -hmm. And my friends that went in before us were not black. Mm -hmm. So it could have been those things, but I've never been told like to my face, you cannot come in because you're a foreigner or you can't come in because you're black. Like that's never happened to me. But Mm -hmm. I've had friends who have had horrible situations where it's like, no, it's because you're black. Like you cannot be here. Things like that. It does happen. I don't want to diminish anyone's experience or say that it never happens because it does. Mm -hmm. Just luckily I have not had it that outright. Yeah, I heard that that's been an issue recently. I'm not sure. Have you seen like those TikToks? Yeah, I've seen them. (laughs) And I think for me, when it comes to racism, I was working somewhere and the place where I was working, you can like work wherever, like wherever there's a spot, you just stand. Right. And one day I was alone working by myself. Normally I'm working like probably with someone else, but that day I was alone and I had just started. This was like my third day. And somebody came up to me and they said, oh, how did you get here? And I'm like, what did you mean? How did I get here? I took the bus. (laughs) What do you mean? How did I get here? They're like, oh, how did you get inside of here? Yeah. And I'm like, uh, I'm working here. (laughs) They're like, what company do you work for? Oh, I work for a company. I want nobody to bother you. (laughs) Oh, I work for, I work for such and such company. And then the lady started having amnesia. She's like, oh, what company? And I'm like, huh? Like, I just started, like, why are you questioning me? And I had to show her, like, my group chat from my company's group chat. Like, oh, here's my group chat, and here's my sponsor, like, who I'm working under. She she searched the person's name, and she was like, oh, oh, okay. And then she left. Week later, working in, but this time. There, I'm working with like an, another Korean person. There is a different lady and I guess she didn't see the Korean person in front of me. So she's staring dead straight at me. And I'm like, oh, Ignacio. And I thought this was like probably one of the team members I didn't meet before. She turns to the, the Korean person, but she's like still like side-eyeing me. And she's like, oh, what? Who do you guys root for? <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, and then this time, she made the Korean person take her to the company that we worked for. Sorry, you had to go through that. That would have annoyed the hell out of me. <laughs> it's all good. Conquering discrimination for <laughs> person. How is dating as a Black woman in Korea? I don't think I really have any problems. The people I want to date usually want to date me. I think men in general are just trashy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and a lot of people ask me this all the time, like what's the difference between like American men and Korean men? I don't really see much of a difference when it comes to like how trashy they can be sometimes. But as for can I date? Do they like black women? 
also being plus size, do they like plus size black women? I'm sure that there are some that don't, but I don't talk to them <laughs> and I haven't really met them. So in that case, I wouldn't know, but they do, they will like you. They, they all want to date you, but don't expect the K-drama fairy tale. I think a lot of people expect that when coming. I've never had a man put his jacket in a puddle for me, so. If you go into it realistically, I think dating is, is like how it can be anywhere else. And as any guy ever tells you, oh, this is a cultural difference, he's trying to manipulate you he's alive so <laughs> and i feel like that's something to be very cautious of many many girls tend to come here with that idea like oh my God, it's gonna be a k-drama and i'll challenge that point mm -hmm. like to an extent it can be but people don't realize how toxic k-dramas are and so yeah don't don't come here because of guys no Never go anywhere because of a man, ever, ever, ever. Men, men are men. And if you're going to travel somewhere, do it for you. 100%. And guys here do like prey upon the idea that women like them just because they're Korean. Yes. And I've had guys tell me that. Like, mm -hmm. she told me I look like this K pop idol. And he knows damn well. He will look nothing like that K pop idol. But that girl said he looked like him. And he uses that to his advantage. And they think that you're, I don't wanna say stupid enough, maybe naive mm, or gullible. gullible if they feel like you are gullible they are going to take advantage of that look at men as men no matter where you are in the world she's got a point the main thing like focus on yourself do you hot girls up boys down <laughs> always <laughs> you're always on top so just like back in the states how men will compare you to like food and crap they do that here too and it's even <laughs> i feel like it's to a different extent like i was talking to this one guy one time and he was like oh you remind me of somebody and i'm like oh like he was like a rapper i'm like okay let me entertain it i'm like okay what rapper like Lauren Hill, and he was like yeah you look like 50 his daughter. <laughs> That's disrespectful. <laughs> Another guy, different one. He was like, oh yeah, because you're black, right? You have different expectations for men. And I'm like, oh, I've been told that too. Uh-huh. Yeah. What type of thing was it? Should I supposed to? Yeah. <laughs> He's like, oh, you want black power. <laughs> <laughs> what connotation are you using that? Block. <laughs> That's too much. Don't be afraid to hit that block button. <laughs> yeah. I was talking to this guy, and this happens quite often. We'll be having a normal conversation, and then out of nowhere, they send me like pics of themselves that I did not ask for. Yeah. And when that happens, I'm really disgusted. I don't like mm. getting that, like, especially random. We're talking about cafe, and you just randomly send me a picture of yourself. That's really weird. And he asked me if he looked like Black Panther, like right under it. Mm really petty sometimes. So I just sent a picture of a magnifying glass and then I blocked it. <laughs> <So>. Error, <laughs> cannot be found. <laughs> Can black people be K-pop idols? I'll say yes. In the past, I used to not understand it. I knew people who wanted to be singers, but they specifically wanted to be K-pop singers. Mm. And in my head, it was all like, if you got a chance to be a singer in America, does that mean that you'd say no? I didn't really understand that. Honestly, I, I still don't really understand that. <laughs> but I also think that people have a right to do whatever they want. And if their dream is to be a K-pop singer, mm. then yeah, I think they should try. Yeah, I completely agree. Although sometimes it feels slow, Korea is still advancing and there have been idols from the one group from that too yeah yeah from black swan i don't listen to black swan but i just like her <laughs> <Me too. laughs> i'm pretty sure i saw her at a cafe one time and i was just looking at her and i was like is that, like, is that her? Like, like, what, what is going on? And if I was, or if it wasn't, she was a very beautiful girl. And I was like, wow, she's so pretty. Even a lot of famous people here, the biggest influences come from black people. And <laughs> thank you. you know? like, but that is a thing. 
And I've noticed that a lot of Korean that I've talked to, they like music, but they're probably not into it to where they're like researching who made what. And they truly think that their like favorite idol or whatever came up with that trend. And the biggest one that I can remember is Keith Ape with Itchy Ma. <laughs> and it was like a complete rip off, but it's just, I won't go into that song because that song just makes me feel a type of way. Anyone who listens to American music can easily pick up where he took it from. Like, that's how much he copied. Like, there was nothing original about it at all. So I was like, come on now. A lot of the music that Korea makes tends to be like music from like back in the days when we were younger. Yeah. Because I always ask myself like, why does this music hit when it hits? And then I wonder, <laughs> and then I think about it, I'm like, oh, because it sounds like the music I used to listen to back when I was younger. Yeah. Do you know Pentagon? When they had that song, Shine? And they were like, dun -dun -dun. And they were doing the the stance. Who is this? It, do you know Edwin and Cuna? Ed, huh? Cuna's boyfriend. Oh! Oh! oh. <laughs> oh. 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 They came out with this song and they were doing the dance, the stance. You know. Oh, the, the shoot dance. Yeah, shoot. Okay. You know what they call it in Korea? Or the hammer dance. Of course. And I was living with a homestay family at the time. Mm -hmm. And I was teaching the little one. I love her so much, Sassy. <laughs> Another video about her. Uh, you can find it when they found my wig collection. I was telling her, like, yeah, did you know this dance? It's from the Black community, right? And she's like, what? Pentagon made that. Yeah. And I'm like, no, yeah, we did! And my Korean wasn't good at the time. And I was like, Korean <laughs> <laughs> community! Yeah, this dance is not a Korean dance. It's not called the hammer dance. Yeah. It's called the shoot. Give credit where it's due. Yes. What would you say are some positive aspects of of being black and creative. Uh, I tried to think of answers like before I came and I forgot all of them once I walked through the door. <laughs> so, um, positive aspects. Um, for me personally, I think I've come out of my shell more. I don't know if that has anything to do with Korea or just being in a place where it's like, I feel like I can't integrate that much into society like I think there's like a cap of how far I could go just because I am a black foreigner mm -hmm. um, versus like an Asian foreigner or something so in that aspect I can really just do whatever I want to do <laughs> and whether I do something good or bad everyone's going to give me the excuse that I'm a foreigner <laughs> So, and it kind of works in my favor. I've met other people who have the same mindset as me here, like, <laughs> helps you to like flourish in the things that you want to do. I think that that's a good thing about being black here, only because I can't be anything else here. Like, I can't blend into anything else here. There's no other room for me. So it's like, you either have to proudly be who you are, or you just, I think some people might struggle with the fact that no matter how long that they're here, they can't really be one with the good mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I completely agree. And I feel like because we've been here for like a minute, yeah. <laughs> we've been here for like a minute, we've had that time to explore many different options. Mm -hmm. Unlike other people who come here maybe for like a year and they go back home because I feel like you need more time to integrate. Right. So I used to be a study abroad advisor and I like to say there are several cool. phases. Yeah, there are several phases of when you're living in a different country. Mm -hmm. There's the honeymoon phase, then there's the depression phase, <laughs> <laughs> then there's the like, oh, you're settled in type of phase. Mm -hmm. And I feel like only at that point where you're settled in, you're comfortable to go out of your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I kind of feel that like it takes some time, especially like when everything is new, it's like complete sensory overload mm -hmm. and it takes time to like get past that. When I came to Korea, I kind of like hit the ground running. Like, I didn't want to be alone. And because back home, like, even my sister was like, I was worried you weren't going to make any friends. Because back home, I, I just stick to my people. And I'm just like, 
everyone else in Milan. But here, I was like, no, I'm gonna make friends, I'm gonna have experiences. And I didn't really connect with the people I worked with. So I was like, there's no way I would be over here by myself. So I was like on Facebook, like trying to find friends and stuff. And I think I was like on that. Maybe that was my honeymoon phase because I didn't slow down until the next year. And so it was just a full year of just always doing something. I just never sat. And then I was just really tired. So then for like about six months, I just stayed home all the time. And then that changed again. <laughs> but when COVID hit, like I had to be home. And for three weeks at my old school, they were like, don't leave your apartment. And that, like, I made it to day three, and I was like, I'm going to die. Like, this is too much for me. And then day three, I was like, I've got to get out of here, or I'm going to, like, jump out of this window. Like, this is too much for me. I don't know where the, why that sign came out, but I'm having fun. Yeah, as you should. <laughs> I feel like it's a period of just exploring and finding new things. Mm. Because I feel like Korea, there's always so many things to do. Yeah. Always so many things to do. Back at home, can't say the same. Um, but like here, especially with like transportation and stuff. Oh my gosh. Where is you from in the state? Florida. Florida. Is there like public transportation in It's there, but it's <laughs> I mean, we, we have one train. It goes up and down. Okay, so it's like Texas. <laughs> I feel like Texas is even better though. Don't you guys have like the trains in the middle of the street? We do have a train. Like I'm from the DFW, Dallas, Fort Worth area. Mm -hmm. There is a train. And I took it one time, and I will never get on that train again. It's um, a full of weirdos, and just, it, it's a mess. I did a video, like, a social experiment video or whatever the other day, where I wore my hair for, like, 24 hours, my half year, right? Mm -hmm. It was like this. Normally, it's it's about this length when it's stretched out. Mm -hmm. So I stretched it out, right? And you know, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna have my little my hair out, and it's gonna be so big and fluffy. Mm -hmm. I walked outside. I think so. <laughs> and I'm like, I should be used to this because I'm from Florida, but it's like still that shock. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I did a braid off for what? Usually my hair is very curly and it's very, very thick. And Korea has the, the tiniest hair ties. So like when my hair, you know, betrays me, I'm trying to get it into that little hair tie. And it's like, please Lord, use your strength to keep these strands together. Cause if it breaks, I don't know what to do after that. <laughs> so, you gotta have to tie it together. Yeah. <laughs> Put my hands together. You gotta salvage. Please get my hair this time, please. How do you find hair care products? I order them. Mm -hmm. Or um, sometimes my mom will send a care package and she'll only do like one a year because it's really expensive. And she'll just pack it with like hair stuff. And um, I also found a Korean conditioner and shampoo. That took a while. But I don't know the name of it. I can see the picture in my head, but I'll send it to you. It's a little bit expensive, but I got it as a gift from my job one year. So I was like, let me just try it. And I was like, oh, this is why it's expensive. Like, this is nice. <laughs> this is nice. This is My hair feels great. <laughs> the way we use conditioner, I'm not even gonna say I. We use conditioner. It's not a dime size. No, it's a. I'm talking about <laughs> things <laughs> ten times, and that's only for one little section. <laughs> and that was it for today, you guys. Thank you for all the questions and everything you had for me. I hope that Taylor and I were able to answer some of your questions and some of the questions you guys had about living in Korea. So I hope you guys can come here with an easy heart and live your best life in South Korea. Never a man. Yeah, never a man. <laughs> Always you. And that's on what? Period. Oh. <laughs> oh my God. Period. That's better. Until next time, I will see you guys later. And let's give Taylor one more round of applause before she goes. <laughs> well, thank you guys again for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Bye. <laughs> we're, we're gone. You can zoom in. Yes, zoom in.